Hello, I'm Kimilia. Welcome to Kini News. Dewan Rakyat Speaker Johari Abdul told lawmakers to not involve him in their arguments. This came following an argument over alleged conflict of interest. Dewan Rakyat Speaker Johari Abdul told members of parliament that they should submit a motion to remove him from his position if they do not like the way he handles the Dewan Rakyat proceedings. This came after an argument broke out in the House earlier today over alleged conflict of interest in the approval of a motion submitted by Sungai Petani MP Taufik Johari, who is his son. Saya tidak dilantik. Let me repeat. Saya tidak dilantik oleh mana-mana parti. Saya dipilih di bawah perlembagaan. Jadi untuk itu, oleh kerana saya dipilih, mana parlimen lain yang telah memilih saya. If you don't like me, put a motion. Put a motion, that's all. Get me out here. Johari also urged lawmakers not to involve him in their arguments in the Dewan Rakyat. The argument had broken out after Pendang MP Awang Hashim remarked Anak Bapa when Arau MP Shaidan Kasim questioned why Taufik's motion was approved before this. According to Shahidan, he had submitted his motion on Tuesday while Taufik sent his in on Wednesday. While commenting on the issue, Johari said Shahidan's motion was unrelated to the rice issue and thus it was unfair for the opposition to say there was a double standard. Awang's comments had prompted Taufik and Jolutong MP RSN Rayer to urge the former to explain and retract his statement. However, the Pandang lawmaker replied simply with conflict of interest but did not elaborate. Deputy Speaker Alice Lau, who was presiding the session at the time, explained that there is no conflict of interest as Taufik's motion was given to her fellow Deputy Speaker Ramli Muhammad Noor to deliberate. Lau asked Awang to retract his statement but later kicked him out as he did not do so. Goldman Sachs has filed a legal action against Malaysia. The arbitration action, which is linked to the settlement agreement on their role in the 1MDB scandal, was filed in the UK. Goldman Sachs has filed a legal action against Malaysia in a United Kingdom court. This is over the settlement agreement linked to its role in the 1MDB scandal. Reuters quoted a source as saying that the arbitration was filed at the London Court of International Arbitration. According to the report, the Anwar Ibrahim-led government and the Attorney General's chambers did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Previously, it was reported that Anwar threatened to haul Goldman to court. Both sides were involved in a dispute over a 2020 settlement agreement where Goldman had agreed to pay 3.9 billion US dollar to settle Malaysia's criminal investigation over its role in the affair. In a regulatory filing earlier this year, Goldman said it was also required to make a one-time interim payment of 250 million US dollar if the Malaysian government had not received at least 500 million US dollar in assets and proceeds by August last year. Malaysian and US authorities estimated that 4.5 billion ringgit was embezzled from Malaysia's sovereign wealth fund, 1MDB, in an elaborate global scheme that implicated high-level officials in the fund. It was previously reported that prosecutors have said Goldman helped 1MDB raise 6.5 billion US dollars through bond sales and earned 600 million US dollars in fees. The U.S. has been returning funds it has recovered from seized assets that were allegedly bought with 1MDB money. Still on the issue, the 1MDB task force expressed surprise over their move. However, they said the government would respond to the matter and ensure that the interest of the Malaysian people is safeguarded. The special task force to recover 1MDB assets said they were surprised by Goldman Sachs' move to initiate arbitration proceedings against Malaysia. This was because both parties were currently in the stage of good faith discussion to resolve any dispute over Goldman Sachs' obligation on a 250 million US dollar interim payment. Task Force Chief Johari Abdul Ghani said that, however, in light of recent events, the government of Malaysia will be preparing to respond to the matter and ensure that the process is done diligently and in accordance with the established legal frameworks. He added that they will also ensure that the interest of the Malaysian people is safeguarded. Johari explained that Goldman Sachs was obliged to pay the $250 million on August 18, 2022. 
Following this, he said Putrajaya had agreed to extend the deadline four times. He said each extension was for a three-month period and the latest and fourth extension was set to expire on November 8th. Johari explained that this meant that the parties were still in the good faith discussion stage and the government viewed Goldman Sachs' move as premature and without due consideration of necessary prerequisites. Johari added that the action appears to be an attempt to detract and divert attention away from their obligation to stick to the interim payment under the settlement agreement. My airline declared that they were suspending operations effective today. In a statement, they said it was due to financial pressure and time constraints. Budget carrier My Airlines Sundiram Berhad has suddenly suspended its operations today. This comes barely a year after their maiden flight. Passengers who waited in the early hours to catch morning flights today were greeted with empty My Airlines counters this morning at KLIA2. In a statement at around 5.30 a.m., the low-cost airline said it has come to this decision because of financial pressures that made it necessary to suspend operations pending the shareholder restructuring and recapitalization of the airline. My airline said it had explored various partnerships and capital raising options but was unsuccessful. They apologized for having to make the decision and said that they understood the impact it will have on their loyal passengers, dedicated employees and partners. My airlines added that unfortunately, the constraints of time have left them with no alternative but to take this decision. The airline also advised its passengers not to proceed to the airport and urged those who require assistance to contact the company's care line. The company said it would work to resume operations as quickly as possible but was unable to commit to any timeline. Meanwhile, Sarawak Premier Abang Johari Tun Openg has denied a report which claimed that his son was a potential new investor in the airline. Sarawak Premier Abang Johari Tun Openg has denied a report that said his son would invest in My Airline Sendirian Berhad, which had announced it is suspending operations due to financial problems today. Speaking in Kuching, he said the speculation could have been due to his son, Abang Abdullah Izarim, attending the company's recent dialogue session in Kuala Lumpur. He was quoted as saying by Bernama that his son is put in a difficult position as all his movements are being scrutinized by the people and this is not fair. Abang Johari also dismissed the report about the possibility of my airline becoming a Sarawak-owned airline. He insisted that the state government is still focused on negotiations to acquire Mass Wings, a subsidiary of Malaysia Airlines, Berhad. Barely a year after its maiden flight, My Airline announced this morning that it is suspending operations, effective today, because of significant financial pressures. My Airline said it had explored various partnerships and capital raising options but was unsuccessful. The company said it would work to resume operations as quickly as possible but was unable to commit to any timeline. Fahmi held a meeting with TikTok's top management yesterday. The meeting was meant to iron out several issues, which included the increasing spread of fake news on the social media platform. Communications and Digital Minister Fahmi Fadzil today said TikTok's compliance with Malaysian laws is still unsatisfactory and must be improved promptly. Fahmi said he had personally stressed the matter during a meeting with TikTok's top management, led by TikTok Global Vice President Helena Lerst yesterday. Fahmi added that TikTok must also be more proactive in curbing the spread of fake news and defamatory content on the platform. In a post on Facebook, he said TikTok's management had also acknowledged the weaknesses in their response due to the absence of a representative in Malaysia at the moment. He said the meeting was meant to iron out several issues related to the increasing spread of fake news on the social media platform and the operation of TikTok's shop in Malaysia. Meanwhile, Fami said TikTok was also reminded to address issues related to advertising purchases and content distribution on the platform. This was following complaints from businesses, the public and media agencies that have been greatly affected by advertisements placed directly with the social media platform. According to Fahmi, TikTok has given their assurance to increase cooperation with the Malaysian government. He said they also pledged commitment to hold further discussions as soon as possible to solve these issues. 
And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to miliciakini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.